Hey guys, Condor here. We're back with some more War Thunder today. Now today, the game that I have for you is one that I recorded in my P47D25. And uh, this is one of my all-time favorite planes, as I know it is for many people in the War Thunder community. Uh, and I just really kind of felt like flying it out. So uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get into the action. So... I got a couple hits on that first guy, but nothing critical, so I didn't really bother, you know, analyzing it play by play, you know. But uh, this guy below me, I had an altitude advantage. I'm not really sure what he was doing right here because he just pretty much flew straight and got completely annihilated by the 50 cals of freedom. Uh, and then the J2M2 began to dive on me, so I just dove down, looped back around. He didn't want to lose his altitude, and uh, neither did I. I tried to, you know, maybe I turn around and try and get a snapshot, but he was long gone. I think it's crazy good energy retention for a Japanese plane, especially. Uh, but I looped back around, saw the Ki-43 from earlier. It Right now, it's actually engaging a P-51 and a Spitfire, but the Spitfire just kind of left. I'm not really sure what he was doing, I think. I don't know. He just kind of left, so now the uh, Ki-43 was engaging the P-51, the J-2M2 is diving on me, but I'm a much heavier aircraft, and he can't catch me in a dive, so I was pretty comfortable just ignoring him for the most part. Uh, so I'm following this KF-43 down, trying to save my teammate. Uh, the KF-43 cannot hold a dive, or maintain a dive with a P-51, even the cannon variant, just because it rips his wings way earlier, so it, he had to pull up, and I took advantage of that and was able to set him on fire and I uh, pulled up back out of the dive going 740 kilometers an hour turn all that speed back into altitude so really this plane has fairly good energy retention because it is so heavy but uh yeah it's just oh man I just love this plane so much it's it's so pretty just look at it it's a gorgeous plane oh and then this KI-43 managed to put out the fire which is beyond me. I don't understand. It just seems like the Japanese put out more fires than any other country. Which really doesn't make sense in my opinion. Because they are the ones that don't have the self-sealing fuel tanks and wooden planes. And uh, I managed to set that guy on fire just purely out of luck. I'm not even sure I hit him right there. Because that aim was atrocious. If you actually saw where my crosshair was placed. I am honestly shocked that I hit that shot. Uh, but anyways, he went down, and that was my second kill of the battle, and I managed to save my teammate. Now, uh, this match in particular was kind of unusual in that my team was exceptionally smart as far as American teams go. Like, right out of, right out of the gates, we all climbed east uh, off of takeoff in a group and got to altitude as a team which is very unusual for any country much less the american and british ally teams uh and all of the japanese fighters ended up diving on all we had i believe four b25s and all of the japanese fighters dove on them and got themselves stuck at low altitude and we had this huge altitude advantage over their entire team uh, which pretty much i believe is the reason why our team did so well this match uh and the bombers actually even pulled their weight. They, I think a couple of them even got some kills. Uh, but I'm just diving on this KF-43 that was chasing after the B-25. I pepper him and set him on fire and pull back up out of the dive. Uh, and then the Spitfire comes in and takes a kill, which, in my opinion, was kind of a dickish thing to do because he was on fire and stalling at like 200 meters. And that was pretty salty. I made sure to let him know because it was wrong you know, to take people's kills even though I do it literally all the time it's not okay when it happens to me now that that's out of the way uh, but yeah so our team is actually in a very good position right now we have all of our fighters except for I think one Spitfire died I think that's the only fighter that died this entire t battle on our team and there's only I believe three enemies left and one of them died, but I think he crashed on uh, landing when he rearmed because he is still alive, as you will see later in the battle. But 
So right now, I'm at two-thirds ammo, completely undamaged, just kind of scouting to find out where the other enemy team is, just trying to check, see if I see anything by the carriers. Uh, and then this P-38 that's uh, crossing under me right now actually spotted a couple enemy planes to my left, and they turned out to be two B-7A-2s. Now, the reason you'll see as I uh, engage these bombers the reason that I spend every bit of energy and speed that I have trying to catch these guys is, uh, as you see at the top, it's a very close game between the two teams right now. Uh, the tickets are very similar, and I've actually never gotten to the point where tickets and ground forces are a factor on this map. And I have no idea if this last guy is maybe just going to AFK and like ground units win, so I wanted to make sure that our team had every ticket advantage possible so I made sure of catching these guys as fast as possible and trying to prevent them from bombing these cargo ships and uh, saving our ticket counter and so I'm just diving I'm getting really fast this thing is a beast of a plane it's really powerful engine really heavy ta uh, plane well practically is a tank if you think about it I mean it's so heavily armored Ugh, the only thing that's missing is a 75 millimeter howitzer. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be crazy. Can you imagine that? That'd be insane. But, uh, anyways, I took this first B7A2 out, no problem. It burned up like a matchstick, which I think all planes, Japanese planes, should be like that if you catch them on fire. I don't think they should just put out fuel fires like that. Uh, but the second B7A2 actually manages to kill two ground units and ends up bombing himself, actually. Uh, uh, I probably would have killed him anyways, but it would just made it that much better that he bombed himself and I got the kill for it. <laughs> there's, there's, there's not ma very many feelings other than, like, annihilating something with a Yak-9T cannon that quite compensate for the feeling of watching an enemy bomb themselves and yet you get the kill for it. So, I was feeling pretty good. Right now I'm sitting at four kills. My engine's overheating, so I had to lower my throttle down, just cool it off, and, uh, yeah, just flying back towards the enemy airfields because there is still one enemy left on their team. I believe it was an A6M3, if I'm, uh, if I remember correctly. I think he actually, I, I don't know, I remember seeing him earlier in the match, and he's, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's an A6M3. Uh, but anyways, our team just, once again, began scouting to see if we could track down this last guy. This guy in chat was kind of bummed. He wasn't doing very well, but he was actually responsible for the spotting of the B7A2s. I would not have seen them at all if he had not pointed them out and started chasing them. And they probably could have killed more ground units if he hadn't spotted them. So, you're not useless after all, man. You're, you're a big part of the team. You're the real MVP, mate. Uh, so yeah, I was gonna check the uh, island base, but the last guy pops up in the top left corner of the screen. He wasn't a 6 Okay, I was right. I was just making sure. I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, but So he has an altitude advantage on me right, uh, right now. But I'm not really worried because if it comes to that, I can just dive away. And I have quite a few teammates in the area, so... I just begin to climb away from him, just trying to gain some altitude, because it's, uh, just so that difference in altitude is not as extreme. But I think he goes after the P-38 that I was just talking to in chat. Alright, no, it's a Spitfire. He, uh, dives on a Spitfire, and I think he just whiffs all his shots, but I manage to, uh, pull in right behind him. And at this point, I have 1,800 uh, rounds of 50 cals, and I kind of just start spraying. Like, I was just like, you know what? I just got to go for it, mate. And I just start spraying from, like, a kilometer out, just trying to hit him. Gets a couple sparks right there, just continue spraying. And I just pretty much spray this guy into the ground with my uh, 50 cals. I end up lighting him on fire right here. And just keep shooting keep shooting and then this plane's gone yeah it's nothing quite like ripping a plane apart with 50 cows i really love the m2 brownings i'm not a big fan of the m3 i really like don't feel comfortable shooting them because they shoot so damn fast i feel like i'm gonna run out of ammo so quickly 
it's it's just I don't know. It's like a it's like a I get like paranoid that I'm gonna run out of ammo with like fast shooting guns like the uh Hispano Mark Fives and the M threes, M three Brownings. I don't know. I much prefer the slow firing guns to the uh fast firing guns, but those snapshots with the uh Mark V Hispanos. Oh my god, fantastic. Uh but anyways, I ended the match with five kills. Should have been six. <clears throat> Spitfire. It's your fault, mate. Uh but I still got my ace in the day. Can't complain about that. And as you see, the guy in second place was actually a bomber. He actually got two kills, so and he didn't even die. I think he like went back to base and like jade out. So uh you're not so useless after all, guys. Especially the gunship that is the B-25. Uh, but anyways, I g hope you guys enjoyed this battle. This has been the Condor, and I will see you later.